one of my friends messaged me saying that the quality of my camera is a bit dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't I don't know why it's doing that because on, on on it's fine on my end, but honestly, people can see me. It doesn't matter. Guys, day, guys, fine, so. that was <laughs> like something out of a horror movie. That was all of my worst fears. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, you guys, I'm gonna go. Okay. Look, you faced it. You faced it. We've got through it. It's it's fine now. No, I'm you guys. You. You've done it. You've done I'm it. sorry if I was being a bitch to anyone, but I was like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people asking what happened to the camera. I'm not sure. I, I don't know what's happening. We don't before. know what's happening uh, with Zaki's camera, really with my fucking it. laptop. Like, no one knows what's going on. <laughs> Um, but we made it through. Yeah, and like, okay, so I just need you guys to understand because you guys, you know, we're all getting to know each other here, okay? And Zaki knows this about me. <laughs> okay, one of my like biggest fears in life, like something that I feel like completely ill-equipped to manage um, is tech stuff. And... So, like, I just feel like I don't have any skills. Like, I don't even have basic, like, tech skills. Like, you guys are so ahead of me. And then, so I'm already, like, nervous. Like, even sometimes when I FaceTime my mod and we have these conversations, I feel like I, like, I'm nervous just to not do well in front of her. So then when there's people watching me, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's just, like, oh, my, yeah, my worst nightmare. And to be very clear with the camera thing, we don't know what's happening, but at the end of the day, you can see me. Trust me, in videos, it doesn't look this way. Don't you worry. It'll be fine. It's just a bit blue. I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. At yeah. The end of the day, you can hear me. You can see me. You can hear Miranda. You can see Miranda. Everything is good with the world. <laughs> <laughs> we have to just deal with this as it is. Like, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, this stream isn't perfect, and we know that, and this is certainly not what the intention for the stream was. Um, we, my mod, Simply Santasia, who you'll see in the chat, she fucking, like, went out of her way to test and check this and, like, do everything she could. And, like, I think it's just a bad luck situation. Also, the thing that is tricky about this is that I'm streaming off a, um, off a Mac and I just got a new Mac. So it's, like... And obviously, most people are used in your world, Zach, are used to like PCs. So I might yeah. get, I might get a PC so that this isn't like, um, uh, you know, a it's continuous totally thing. Fine. It's absolutely fine. And the other thing to bear in mind, everyone, is that this isn't the only thing. Like this is literally this is what the second stream on on the on the Twitch channel. This is my second stream on Twitch. So really, really early and. Just be excited for what's to come. I mean, this isn't also this isn't the only thing that Miranda and I are going to do. We've done how many collaborations have we done? <laughs> We've done a few, so it's not the end of the world. We'll be doing more later on, of course, and just enjoy it. Yeah, enjoy it. yeah. Well, um, thanks for being patient, all the viewers, and also thanks for being patient with me, Zaki. Um, I, you know. You're a legend. You're what would fine. I do without you? I, I, I'm so proud of you. You're, 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 you're doing it. You're, you're on Twitch. <laughs> you know, you're, you're doing all of it. And it, and it's all oh, good. hang on, hang on. Fuck, sorry. I think I did something with... Yeah, Wait, I have a questions the, for uh, Zaki. <laughs> every, yeah, every time you go into the questions for Zaki, they can see the questions and not me. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay, though. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, this is this is too much for my brain. I'm trying to follow That's the fine. chat and I have all my questions. Okay, so start again. We're starting, officially starting now. Um, guys, just so you know, this man in front of you with the hat on looking fresh. This is my boy. This is my friend. <laughs> this is Zaki from the YouTube channel Valorant Hub. If you guys aren't watching it, you're crazy. You're bloody crazy. He um, makes some really cool uh, content all around Valorant. Um, and I'm really lucky that throughout this uh, situation of me becoming the VA for Sky, um, that, so what happened was, Zaki made a video about me just being like, oh, like she's the, the, the voice of this character and this has been her life so far. Couple of inaccuracies. And, oh, yes. um, 
in the video, but overall very good. And I saw the video and then I reached out to Zaki and said like, do you want me to come on your channel and we can have a chat? And thus started a beautiful friendship. <laughs> Absolutely. 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 And he helps me with so much. Video. I'm very glad because like you say, it, you know, it, it meant that we, we ended up getting connected at the end of the day. And then we started just, you know, now we're, 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 we're just talking about things that we're trying to do and, you know, trying to collaborate and bounce ideas off each other. So it's, it's been great. It really yeah. Has been. So I'm really, uh, and I really appreciate it and I'm honored to be on the stream. Thank you for, for inviting me on here. It's so, oh, um, thanks it's for so being on it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so um, Zaki, tell tell us about you and your channel. What's the what's what's the what is Valorant okay. Hub to someone who doesn't know? Okay, so I'm going to explain this in a way that um, I was doing a consultation with um, a tech company about a month ago, and they were because um, they were asking about what youtubers need and stuff like that and so i sort of had to give my own rundown to them so i'll give you the same rundown which is basically started off the channel when valorant first launched back in april and i do a living i make a living off talking about games talking about entertainment mediums and uh i basically saw valorant i saw that it was run by riot i'm like this is going to be really awesome and so i just made loads of videos um because i've been doing this for ages i used to work at bbc and then went self-employed and now i've been doing stuff in fortnite and different uh, games and now it seems to be valorant and uh, we've definitely built an awesome community just talking about storylines and new agents new game modes voice actors of course um esports stuff um so that's what i do on valorant hub basically just try and get everything together and form a community so that's uh I suppose that's the short of it, really. And and so what? So you you were like a gamer kid, like you were interested in in games when you were a kid. Absolutely. And Absolutely. then you just like thought, and what were you doing for the BBC? What kind of stuff were you doing so, for them? Well, yeah. So when I when I so uh, when I went to BBC, I I worked on a few different teams that did different things. So part of it was doing regional content. So I'm based in the UK specifically based in Wales. So I was working at the Wales branch for the BBC. Uh, and so I was doing regional content stuff that no one watching this stream will have ever watched because the demographics that I was reaching there were 50s plus because that's what the BBC reaches. Um, <laughs> and then after that, I went to do stuff like Doctor Who and Sherlock and stuff, which some of you will know. Um, and so I worked on like promotional graphics for that. I did some digital marketing strategy for that. Um, and that's really my first job, I suppose, within the digital landscape. Mm. Um, and that sort of doing it. So you didn't go to college, morning. right? No, so I never went to university or I didn't, I technically didn't really finish, finish school. I mean, I did my GCSEs, but I left at 17. So um, I was actually, I was two weeks, if I was two weeks younger, I wouldn't have been eligible to work for the BBC. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I was really sort of close to, to, the, to the threshold there. But um, yeah, that's sort of where I, you know, I sort of, found I suppose legitimacy in the passion of what a lot of us a lot of you watching this will probably be doing YouTube on the side sort of hobby and stuff like that and that's basically what I was doing from the age of about 12 11 up until now um and that's then fucking wild and I'm not suggesting anyone does this because I was ridiculous doing this uh but I basically was just like F it I'm leaving school uh applied I <laughs> I actually applied to work for ITV, which is a different uh, is a different TV station. I know what ITV um, is. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the BBC, just uh, interestingly enough, were like scouts for the BBC were at the interview that I was for ITV. So um, they sort of picked picked me out there um, and uh, asked me to come over and, and do what I could do for them, basically. And then. After that, I got a little bit tired of the corporate structure of it. I'm still very grateful for the opportunities that I had there, but I got a bit tired of the corporate structure. And so I decided to try things out um, individually, which is both one of the best things I've ever done in my life and also one of the st most stressful things I've ever done in my life. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, so like low key, are you a genius? Is that what this is? Absolutely not. <laughs> Because I feel like, I feel like uh, someone said in the chat, Blitz said in the chat, Zaki is a smart person. And it's like, it's like, yeah, like, are you a genius? Is that why you didn't? <laughs> I'm definitely not a genius. What I, what I do do is I, I'm very, um, 
because some people do ask me how do you think of like the content that you make and stuff like that and i simply don't have there, there's nothing that i'm scared of doing if that makes sense because i suppose when i left bbc there wasn't really you know um there wasn't something that i had to like how do i how do i put this um until something is done it's not done and i don't think that in gaming and any medium with how new gaming is and how new the media industry is within gaming you know so many things like the the montages that you watch the pro plays that you watch the uh the uh, the guides that you watch for valorant all of that is sort of uh, set up already there's a meta for content right you guys know the meta for gaming in terms of like you know that sky has her really powerful flashes you know that breach is powerful in pro play well in content there's a meta too and the meta in content is uh these set specific things which is montages cut commentaries etc um so what i do is basically look at the stuff that hasn't yet been done in a certain game and bring it to the game basically wow yeah yeah it's it's so, sorry that, that was a that was a weird <laughs> yeah no like i got i was like ah oh, am i <laughs> trying to follow <laughs> along with you um yeah, no, I think what you do is super interesting. And I guess the thing that I always think, I'm like, um, that is a huge teacup, Dan. Are they talking to me or you? Do you have a huge teacup? I have no idea. <laughs> this is my teacup. Oh, they're both teacup, blue. Twins. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I guess as well, like, do you, th so how often are you making a video? Are you making video every day? So I was making videos every single day up until about two weeks ago. Um, and I spoke a lot about that in yesterday's video where some of you will have seen that, but essentially um, Valorant has been uh, really interesting over the past sort of six months since, or eight months roughly since its launch. Mm. Um, but you know, at different points in games, you have different metas, you have different um, things that are interesting. And sometimes, and a lot of you will know this, Fortnite, for example, really blew up from the constant content they were dropping every single week at that point uh, and of course ninja and myth blew up from that and all these other uh, very popular fortnite content creators cyber pk etc uh but valorant i think because of how early it is and because i think right games business model is very different to epic games business model uh things are you know you have times where things are really crazy and we see all these different teasers and we see episode two and the lore and stuff and then other times, you know, I think the players are more just left to enjoy the game uh, without so many updates coming out. And I think we're sort of in that phase right now. Mm. Um, and in terms of making content for new stuff, when there isn't a lot of new stuff, it's about trying to, um, I mean, in all, in all honesty, more projects are being worked on now with Valorant Hub behind the scenes than have ever been worked on before. And the reason for that is, is that because things aren't going crazy as far as new content is concerned, it seems to be the right time to work on long-term projects rather than work on the short-term content that I normally do. So, uh, for example, I'm going to be making a video out of this interview, no doubt about it. Because Let's cut out the content. tech issues. Uh, okay, I will do. I will do. There's just 20 uh, minutes of me like going, ah! <laughs> 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 right? Um, but yeah, no, once, I think with Act 2, we'll see, uh, we'll see daily uh, content again. But mm. what I will say is that come the end of this month, there's going to be some very exciting announcements, I think, for, uh, for things that you can expect from Valorant Hub. So I'm looking forward to sharing it with you all. Yeah, yeah. No, um, I wanted to ask you a question, and I, I don't know I, um, if you're in the chat. Also, P.S., if it, uh, someone said that I look confused, okay, here's the thing about that. My, you know how people have resting bitch face? I think I have like resting dumb face. Cause I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> like when I'm not, when I'm not like, um, when I'm listening, I kind of am just like, what? Like I have this look on my face where I just look deeply confused. And someone said it to me the other night and I was like, no, I'm just like listening. So just like FYI on that, um, on people being like, you look confused. I'm always confused. Um, but I wanted to ask you, and I don't know if you guys, um, like I personally love YouTube and you and I have talked about that. We probably have like mm. crossover in some of the things that we find interesting on YouTube, but like you and I are yeah. both into that like culture and stuff. Yeah. And do you feel like 
you have from doing this channel and being a person that produces like content, do you feel like you kind of understand the YouTuber burnout thing? I've ruined YouTube for myself. Really? Of being a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. I see everything that's happening now and I'm like, I can't enjoy it as a consumer that I once was with it. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, burnout is definitely a thing, and that's one of the reasons as well that I that I slow down on the daily uploads because you know I was trying to make content out of not a lot of that was happening really. So oh, definitely, I I, I mean yeah, and, and it's a case of you know when you're when this is a job, you know you have to sort of manage it because um, otherwise you know burnout can turn into some serious mental issues basically. So mm -hmm. uh, and I've definitely been in that spot before. Thankfully, I've been doing this long enough now. I've been self-employed for a few years now, so. Um, I've sort of, I'm now able to be in touch with my feelings more and understand how I'm feeling and stuff mm -hmm. uh, and then try and sort of adjust my daily schedule to that. So no, totally. I, I can, I can relate. Like, I feel like I have <laughs> someone messaged me on TikTok cause I didn't upload some videos for like a week. I didn't put anything on TikTok, um, because I just have other stuff that I'm working on at the moment. And like, honestly, like you might not think this because we had tech issues, but like, it's been a lot of like setting things up on the back end for Twitch with my mod. And like, it's just, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. And um, I didn't post and someone was like, are you okay? Like, what's going on? Like, why haven't you posted? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm just like a little bit busy, but like, I'm totally fine. Absolutely. But that- I mean, ex Expectations are definitely set up when you're posting, and with, especially with you. You've been posting to TikTok. You've been you've been grinding out here. So like, yeah, you know, your community definitely will now have. I mean, already on Twitch even if you don't stream on Wednesdays, people are gonna be like. I mean, I will even be like, I'll message you if you don't stream on Wednesday and be like, you you good? Like, what was it? What's good? <laughs> so, yeah, no, sorry, I think I think I cut you off. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, someone someone just followed. I don't know. Did something just happen? <laughs> Can you see this dream? Oh, uh, Justin followed. Back. Yes, the Justin followed. Thank you so much for following me, my dude. Um, what was her name? The Justin. Awesome. Thank you, the Justin, for uh, for following Miranda. And everyone who's watching this, if you haven't already, I'd imagine that everyone is. But if you haven't already, you know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, follow, follow. Um, so you guys, the other day, I'm just going to tell the story, the, a story. The okay. other day, Zaki and I had a call planned for like, was it like 12 p.m. LA time? And then yeah. I <laughs> didn't, he messages me at like 12 p.m. LA time. So he's, he's in another country to me, but he messages me and he's like, talk to you in five or something like that and then I don't respond and then like an hour later he's like wait mate are you okay like what's going on and I was like oh my god I just oh falcon 999 just followed thanks falcon dab for ya um uh yeah that I was like oh my god I slept until 1 p.m because I was so <laughs> so tired and I was like wow I'm like sleeping through meetings and fucking planned phone calls but yeah it's like I think but I can relate but oh can relate. god I can imagine totally so but yeah that's why I was I wasn't upset with you or anything you know I, the main thing was I just want to make sure that you were okay because <laughs> you're be you are you are very punctual generally so I was like you yeah yeah no totally i uh i think as well like for you probably quarantine probably hasn't affected your life too much because you are working so much from home mm. but yeah. like my life is like there was in december and january i was like literally like you know this like not fucking doing mm. a damn thing because it was the ep i'm in la and it was the epicenter of covid and the numbers were just so insanely high. You like really couldn't, you had to be so careful of everything you did. So I like wasn't doing anything. Um, and then now all of a sudden LA's opened up a bit more and I like have a bit of a social life and there's more stuff happening with auditions in the industry and stuff. And I'm like, holy shit. Like I forgot how intense real life was. I'm like, wow. I mean, honestly, I'm like, cause I'm thinking about that myself. Like, cause I don't plan to be at home forever, obviously. 
and I'm thinking about that, I'm like, I am going to be exhausted when I find, like, for example, and a lot of you hopefully will be uh, interested and excited for this, but when eventually things are, you know, uh, in, in a better place and stuff, as far as, like, the pandemic and stuff is concerned, um, you know, when, when real-life events come up, like E3, Gamescom, etc., I am going to be knackered. Yeah. I'm going to be knackered from that, and I'm like, oh, gosh, but obviously we'll get through it and stuff, but... Yeah, no, I know that's going to be so, so tiring because I'm so used to, even though what I do tires me out anyway, I'm so used to essentially being in a chair for so many hours and just like basically living my life through a screen at the moment. So uh, yeah, actually, the actual physical exertion is going to be a new thing to me. I know, right? Yeah, like getting up <laughs> and I haven't worked out for like three days because I was like just getting stuff done. And I was like, yeah, yeah I should probably go outside. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> Will probably be a good idea. I'm just reading the chat, and sure. Tra Trauma Guardian said that Lessie is playing a game with us and watching your your stream. We need our Sky main. So, I mean, Lessie is my girl, so she should be allowed to watch the stream, y'all. But I know she's in a team, so I don't know what that means. But just let her live. Let Lessie live. All right. <laughs> I'm not. We're not going to be here for too much longer. Um, someone said, does being a voice actress mean that you know a lot about the agent maps? No. I know nothing about the agent maps. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Um, but, Zaki, I wanted to ask you, and some of this, y'all, may go over my head because, as you know, I'm not a gamer. Um, I have an interest in it, obviously, but I'm not, like, you know, a gamer gamer. So... I want you, do you have any, like, insider theories? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I suppose we do have to go over this eventually so that I can make a clickbait title for it on YouTube. So exactly, I yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> wrong. Um, okay. Well, I suppose the best thing to do... Um, hmm. Hmm. How do we... How, 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 do we, how do we start this? I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> okay so what we do know right now is that we are slowly but steadily approaching act two for valorant episode one episode two episode two aren't we so in episode two the... yeah so we're episode two act one right now right uh, right episode right two act one started in january january 12 um so act two should be here around march now, one thing that everyone should know, and I know a lot of people know this already, but a lot of people don't, and more people than you think, right? Um, and I know this because of the number of DMs I've received about this. Um, we will have a new agent. Unless we can, unless Riot completely breaks the cycle of what they've already said is going to happen, we are mm -hmm. going to see a new agent um, in basically two and a half weeks from now, three weeks from now. A new map, on the other hand, I really hope it's going to happen we have had very little teasers now the good thing is is that when it comes to gaming industry meta live service games etc the 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 meta is that we will see teasers a few weeks before the release so we're still in that period where we not necessarily going to see anything until a week from now or something and then by then as you all know i will cover everything that we see uh, but as of right now um We've spoken about all the different maps that we could see. We don't really know, know much about agents. We've spoken about having a part for New Guinea map, a Nimbin map, obviously Sky, um, and we. A Papua about, New Guinea uh, map is that's a crazy theory. It'd be awesome. Where yeah, did you get that we, we idea were, from? So in the uh, sorry in in the uh, and a lot of you will know this, but I I'm just going to explain it so that everyone knows what's what's going on here. Um, so we have, it, in Valorant, there are different maps, right? We have different, like, uh, different places that we can play in. And so we have a place uh, in, in Venice, for example, uh, that, like, a place that's based on Venice. Then we have a, a place that's based on Morocco. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. One place is also based in Russia, in East Siberia. So it's basically uh, a snowy mountain, snowy coast. Of course, you all know this is Icebox. Now, in this, uh, in this snowy mountain area, there is a room. And in that room uh, is what I call the law room, the storyline room. So we have all loads of different Easter eggs in a room. Um, and an Easter egg basically points us to what we might see next. 
Um, now, in that room, there is a map. And in that map, we see a number of um, dots and, and, and lines. So basically, um, tells us where we could see new things happen. So we see a dot on, uh, on in Russia. We see a dot in uh, in Africa. We see a dot in Europe, etc. Uh, one dot we see is in Papua New Guinea. Uh, and so my theory is is that maybe we're going to see an agent or a map or both from Papua New Guinea, which would likely then therefore be a rainforest map, which I know a lot of you want to see. That would be so sick, dude. A rainforest map would be so sick. And I really like that because, um, I mean, Papua New Guinea is, that would definitely be the first time it's in a video game. And it, it would, it's such an underrepresented uh, country. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That would and be wild. Is, I think are trying to represent like a lot of different countries. So yeah. we have a lot of Asian representation. Uh, but we haven't had any uh, Oceania representation whatsoever, mm. like in Nimbin or anything like that, apart from Sky, obviously, which is really awesome. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's weird to me that they don't have an Indian agent. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Did I say something bad? <laughs> that was a look. That, that, no, that was a look of who knows what's going to kill him next. Oh, right. <laughs> I was like, well, what have I done? <laughs> Do we have an <laughs> NDA? I forgot about <laughs> Because the thing is, as we were talking about representation, the Indian, and you know this, the Indian community is incredibly eager and keen um, Mm -hmm. and proactive around Valorant, and there's a huge Indian community. Uh, So the idea that we wouldn't see it, I mean, to be honest with you, we actually already have a few Easter eggs regarding, um, it's difficult to explain right now, but in videos I've explained that we've seen train lines in India uh, based around, um, I don't know, I can't remember the name, but near Bhutan, basically. Uh, so we could, well, and I would be surprised if we don't eventually see an Indian agent end map. The one thing that is very important for Valorant fans to be aware of, us, though, is that, you know, because we're so early on in the game, we will eventually probably have everything we want, but it's going to take a while. Mm, it's yeah. Take quite mm-hmm. a while. So we just have to be really patient about that. And I see yeah. someone, um, someone saying something about the night market. Yes, I tweeted about it, my friends. Uh, I don't know whether the night market is going to happen. So just to explain to you real quick, the night market in in game you can buy like weapon skins and stuff like that to like spruce up your character and stuff. Mm. Uh, but skins are pretty expensive, uh, and, I, and I'll admit that. Like a lot of you tell me to tell Riot to make them less expensive. I have no control over that. Um, but like a bundle costs you like a hundred quid or something. So uh, it, it can be expensive uh, sometimes more. Uh, night market basically is like a discount store. And they have, and so they give you a discount store at the end of the, at the end of each act. So yeah, night market is probably going to come up um, at the end of every act, I imagine. I don't, I have no insider information on that, but that's just based on logically what we're seeing. Yeah, yeah. I'm y'all. If it looks kind of weird that I keep like looking over to um to the side, um, it's because that's where my You're phone is with right? with the chat. I'm oh, looking at the chat. Yeah, yeah. so that's yeah, why yeah, I keep also. looking at over there. But oh, uh, <laughs> Data Boy uh, Gaming said. I'm ready for some Asian agents. And he said that he was, Jet, uh, Jet is sick, Sage is sick, Euro is sick. And it's so true. Like, they are really good agents. Um, and I definitely know that a lot of people that uh, interact with me on social media, and you and I have spoken about this, Zaki, are Indian. And um, mm. I actually got asked to go on an Indian podcast it's happening. It's just, it's a big Indian podcast about gaming and like the community over there is just like, so, so committed. And you and I have had this conversation before. And, um, Mm -hmm. I think that they should be represented because like, they have so many fans. I mean, everyone should be represented, but it'd be cool to see. They're they're incredibly invested. Yeah. They're incredibly invested. And I, I, it would mean a lot to them. It would mean a lot to them. And they're really fucking cool. Like they, all the Indian people that message me are are really nice. Zaki, do you know on your channel where you have the most viewers from? Like what country? Yeah, so uh, actually, yeah, it surprised me when I first looked at my stats. I hadn't actually looked at my my demographic in longer than maybe I should have. But uh, from what I saw last time, which was months ago, um, uh, from what I saw, there's basically half is Western viewership, so US, Europe. Um, 
we ha there, there's uh, a percentage, not a huge, but a percentage of South African viewership, which I see you all, trust me. Ah, um, cool, they uh, need my uh, country. Yeah, for real. The, the thing about South, Af South Africa is that they, and I, I'm with everyone who wants this, trust me, um, South Africans don't have um, the greatest connection because the server the, the locations basically are quite far away from South Africa. So they're playing on pretty rough conditions right now. Yeah. And trust me, mm -hmm. I see you all. Um, if I have an update with, uh, on that, I'll let you know, but I, I, can't, I, I, I can't do anything about that, unfortunately, because a lot of people ask me about that. Um, and then apart from that, it's a lot of Indian, uh, obviously, uh, viewership, a lot of Turkish viewership. I, I know, I, I know a lot of you are from Turkey, um, and, you know, we may see an Ankara map. Ankara is the capital city for Turkey. Um, and so that will be really cool if we see that. Um, there's a lot of Asian viewership. But what is very exciting to me is that Valorant is, so, and this is something that I know because I know other games like very well in terms of I know the, the global gaming. Like for example, I know I know the Asian viewership stuff very well in terms of Mobile Legends, King of Glory, etc. Which a lot of Western YouTubers I know don't don't know. Um, but Valorant is so truly global, more than most games I know, like more than Fortnite way more than Fortnite, like, mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the demographics is really diverse, and that's super cool to see, so. Well, you yeah, know what I really think, cool. I think a part of that is, and is that, like, in terms of, like, the direction, the directors, the writers, like, the team from Riot are very diverse, and, oh, and yeah. they're all, like, everyone was from different countries that I spoke to. Some people were in L.A., some people were in London. Like, it was very diverse. They're all diff different ethnicities. And I think that if you have a – and, I mean, I don't know. Like, I can only speak to my singular experience with Riot as a voice actor. But I think if you have a company – that is sort of uh, staffing diversely, then I think that that's going to be reminiscent of whatever you're making. And that's why oh, they definitely. talk about – how important it is for television shows to have, you know, equality in terms of uh, diversity and also in terms of, like, the sexes, men and women, or however they identify. And it's like that's definitely, definitely true of the video game world. And I think what is impressive about Valorant is that they are, like, showing agents from all over the world that are kind of, like, working mm. together. And, like, I do think it's really it's really good. And, like, cause, because gaming does have such an influence um, – like, think about how many gamers there are. Like, gaming is a bigger deal than the movie industry. It's a bigger deal than... It's becoming increasingly exactly what you're saying. It's increasingly uh, ramping up. And the, the, you know, the film and gaming are both forms of, of, of media, right? And as far as I'm concerned, those lines of media are increasingly becoming blurred, which is why now we're seeing concerts in Fortnite. You know, we've literally seen the biggest concerts that have ever taken place in history on Fortnite with Travis Scott, for example, I think that had tens of millions of concurrent people there, which is unheard of. Um, so it's, it's, it's crazy. I need to actually look at the chat myself. I haven't been... I did see someone saying about a Korean, yes. Uh, I mean, Jet. Jet herself is Korean. So, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in, like, the, the character. So, yeah, no, Korea is huge. And obviously, you have uh, the Japanese as well, uh, the Japanese uh, culture with, like, you have vision strikers. I don't know enough about the Asian esports scene, if I'm completely honest. But I know Vision Strikers are, 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 are amazing um, and stuff. But yeah, I know there's so many amazing um, parts of the world that are interested in Valorant. When you play Val, who do you main, Zaki? Uh, <laughs> okay, so when I first started playing Valorant, probably, probably for the first maybe three months, I was maining Sage. Uh, mainly because whenever I start playing a new game, especially because I'm not as competitive and as good as a lot of you will be now because i spend more of my time making videos and playing the game um i'll always pick the, the the agent or the character in whichever game that can heal itself because if i get shot at i don't i want to be able to heal myself and sage can heal herself so uh, sage was a, you know was who my, else can heal my, himself not sky <laughs> she can't no. Oh! <laughs> Sky heals others. Sky oh, heals she can't. Okay, got it, yeah, got it, got close. it. You're close. <laughs> 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 so Sage, uh, so that, so Sage, and obviously her barrier orb, her slow orb, that's helpful too. But mainly, Sage can heal both herself and others. Um, after that, um, I started playing as a character a little bit, but mainly actually I was maining uh, Sage until Sky came, and then Sky came, 
uh, <laughs> and then as some of you will know, <laughs> and then some of you will know that uh, Valorant Hub was very kindly invited by Riot to view the access stuff, so I tried out Sky, I wasn't great with Sky at first, and I'm still not great with it now, but uh, definitely a learning curve, as a lot of you will know, um, but then after, finally I unlocked Sky, uh, and then I started playing as her, uh, and actually I, I ended up maining her probably for about a month or two. And then Yoru came around, and I'm basically trying to be decent with Yoru. So right now I'm maining Yoru, but apart from that, it'll either be Sage, Sky, or Phoenix. If okay. I'm, uh, if I'm not playing Yoru, so. Uh, right. And what's Phoenix like? Like, he, what's his special Phoenix. ability? So... A lot of people know that there's a flash meta right now, and I know, Miranda, you, you, you get bombarded with people asking you to change your flashes. <laughs> yes. Um, I've never... Yes. That All um, I hear is Sky is OP. Why is Sky so OP? Have you... Out of curiosity, actually, have you had any less messages recently? Because her flashes have been changed a bit. Uh, have I haven't got messages? as many, yeah. Good, I, I actually haven't been getting as much hate about her. Um, Brilliant. Yeah, it's been kind of, I feel like, less. I don't know, maybe people just decided to stop giving me shit about She's it all the time. controversial. Um, and actually, the reason is, is that flashes in general have become less controversial. And the reason for that is, is that before, and I mean literally less than a week ago, maybe, um, flashes in game, so when you flash someone, basically they can't see and their screen goes white. The, the flashes were so bright on the screen, and a lot of you will, will resonate with this, I know. Um, they were so bright that they actually hurt your eyes. Oh, um, wow. That's what, that's what people were actually getting annoyed by. It was that uh, if Sky flashed you, you would have like four seconds of blinding light basically in your face. And that's what people were genuinely upset about. No, Finally, trust me, babe. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was Finally, like, everyone was like, like oh, sorry, I interrupted you. People were like okay, messaging yeah. me, like saying like, um, you made me blind and like they were like I hate your character and like they were like why are you making me blind I can't see and they just like went it was messages oh, this is really just on TikTok and occasionally I would get like a few hate comments on um on Instagram but it was mainly just like the TikTok people were coming for me but I was just like oh I don't know whatever like I don't know what to say I, I imagine I couldn't I couldn't imagine it because the thing is is it is rage inducing when when you're flashed, but I mean at the end of the day, DMs. You just you don't go to the voice actors DMs. I mean for one they can't do anything, but two, don't yeah. They can't <laughs> <laughs> when you first told me about that, I was infuriated. I was like, How dare people but I know it's the internet, so it's it's how people Yeah, respond. people yeah. and I guess you know, I think the thing is as well, like when people do write mean stuff in the comments, a lot of times if I write back to them like whoa or like yikes or something like that they like will yeah. come back and be like oh i'm kidding i'm kidding and i'm like i don't know if they were kidding necessarily or if they just freaked out because I, I they i actually mm -hmm. saw the comment they don't expect the response <laughs> they don't expect a response but a lot of the time i think tone is also not communicated so they might just yeah. be thinking it's really funny and they're like haha but i don't know them so i'm getting this message yeah. and i'm like what like that's weird, like, I'm just, I don't work for Riot as, you know, like, a content creator. Yeah. So, anyway, Absolutely. it's just, like, kind of funny, but, um, you know, whatever. But, yeah, no, and actually, I just realized I didn't actually answer the question about Phoenix. The main thing is, is that he has a flash, which is helpful. We all know that in Valorant, if you have a flash, it's helpful. Um, also, Phoenix can heal himself, um, so that's really helpful. And his heal, so what Phoenix can do is he can throw a basically a ball of fire onto the floor and it's like a molotov basically so when you throw that fire on the floor you both heal from that fire and if an opponent stands on that fire they'll be damaged by it so Ooh. pretty powerful kid. oh he's so, yeah. he's fire boy then he's fire boy exactly <laughs> <laughs> fire boy's gone <laughs> fire boy's gone i can't well, i'm not even gonna try <laughs> especially not in front of sky's voice actor <laughs> <laughs> no i don't care <laughs> Um, yeah. I really want to get him on. Um, oh, absolutely. I'm sure, he'll, I'm sure he'd, he'd want to. I saw he did something with Eco uh, ages ago. Eco's a, a pro streamer. Um, okay, yeah. So yeah I'm, sure he, I'm sure he'd be interested. But I, yeah, but I, I wonder if, like, he... Yeah, like, I don't know. Anyway, I am going to reach out to him because I've messaged him a few times. And, you know, he's my favorite. I love him. So mm. 
I, I would love to get him on the chat and have a conversation with him. People are asking me to say some voice lines, y'all. I can say whatever you want. Just ask me to say something. You have to, I haven't been taking that. So. Yeah, I've, well, someone has <laughs> been saying it. Uh, Falcon, I think wants me to say something or someone mentioned it before. So if you guys want me to say anything, I will just let me know what you want me to say. We might end. Oh, do we know who the Yoru PA is? Oh, yeah. Um, it's Daisu Takahashi. But trust me, I've tried to find a way to contact them. It's uh, not happening right now from what I've seen. It's like, I can't find their email, so. <laughs> no, dude. Um, I can't find him on social media and I he doesn't even have, like, just so you guys know, if you're an actor and uh, you have IMDb, right? Like, it's that is your professional resume and it shows on the professional back end of the site who represents you. And he wasn't even on IMDb. I couldn't even find his representation on there. So I don't know either. Um, Trust me, guys, put it this way. Um, I do I, I do a lot of research for a lot on, like, with pubs that with public information, which is exactly how I made my video about Miranda in the first place. Um, and yeah, I could not find any, I mean, I could find who it was. That's why I said Daisu Takahashi. I'm sorry if I got the, if I'm saying, if I'm mispronouncing No, it. I think you're killing uh, it. But, Sounds uh, right to me. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no. And the thing is, is that my feeling toward like the reason, I mean, for one, yeah, the, 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 the reason why I haven't really tried to contact them after looking for them is because if someone is that not on online, I feel like there's a reason for it. So I, I, I'm not going to try and pursue them, you know? Like, Miranda was really proactive about things, and so that's why we're collaborating and stuff. But, um, <laughs> Miranda was all over the internet. <laughs> <laughs> she was everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was in my face. Yeah, I think you are everywhere. Like, you were on TikTok now. But back then, you were... Back then... Um, because the, the primary, my primary source of, well, two primary sources of information was uh, Instagram and your IMDb. Mm, so mm -hmm. that's basically how I sorted everything. Yeah, so. no, luckily my uh, my agent had, yeah, told me to like clean up my Instagram a little bit because I didn't realize how <laughs> <laughs> how it was going to be. It's such a thing in the industry. Like people are looking at yeah. your um, at your Instagram. So um, someone wants me to say a, a line. So I'm just going to say. Sure. Uh, a couple of lines. Um, Remember, everyone, if we survive, woodworking class tonight in the mess hall. Nimble hands, nimble minds. Um, and then I'll say one more. Everyone gives Sage a break, crying over every bruise. I'm here. You can bother me. That's a new one, I think. Oh my gosh, the the, the nimble hands and nimble minds. Because I because I played a lot of Sky, you were you were so spot on with that. That's awesome. <laughs> At some point, we do also have to make that video. The thing is, like the video where you like talk through the, through my microphone. Uh, yeah. That's just it's such a difficult technical setup, but eventually you're gonna have to think about it because. That, that, that would be such a banger video, and I think so many people would love it. So yeah. uh, at some point, I'm going to try and think about how we can do that. Yes, I we have to definitely, definitely do that because um, that would be that would be killer. But how will I know, like, what line is coming up? Or I just say well, them? Like, d d well, so, so, so the te technically, and this is why it's going to be difficult, is because what the, the best way to do it in my head is a we're gonna want responses right we're gonna want some fun responses so you're gonna have to be able to hear what they're saying the more difficult thing for me is somehow routing your microphone audio to my microphone in game. yeah but we'll figure it out we'll figure out there's always a way there's always mm -hmm. a way so we'll, we'll, we'll do it um and actually this is really off topic so sorry for bringing it up just completely off topic but last stream i uh and we could talk about this later on also but Last stream, uh, we were talking about like games that you might want to play and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there is one game, one horror game that isn't because the thing is, right, everyone is that I do enjoy like casual games, like as much. I know you all know me from like, well, some of you will know me from Valorant, but um, I'm far from only about Valorant. Um, Phasmophobia, which is something that I that I, I put in the chat or something. Mm -hmm. the, the good thing about Phasmophobia is that it's not going to make 
That's half nightmares, probably. Because <laughs> I, I will get nightmares. I'm not even gonna. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna like front. Like, oh, I'm big. No, I will get nightmares if I watch. If I watch Zach, film, come I will have on, mate. <laughs> so, but what it will do is get some good reactions out of us because there will be a couple of jump scares. So, yeah, that could be cool. Well, um, I think someone might have been. Um, Simply Santasia told me that it's kind of hard though. We need to. What? That, for, yeah, that it's a hard game to play. It needs to be, like, so basic that it's, like, you know, you just yeah. ha it can't be hard. I mean, you saw me trying to fix the fucking audio. Like... <laughs> I've never played Phasmophobia either, either, to be honest with you. I've never played Phasmophobia. Oh, you just want to play it because you feel like it'd be less scary. Oh, it's ha totally. totally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's your whole thing. Okay, hang on. I'm just going to read um, a couple of the um, sure. voice lines. Um, tell you what, a day in the farm would do these fellas good. I don't know how close that was to the performance, but... Uh, and then there was, was one, one more... Um, um, Omen... When you teleport, sometimes I lose you. Does that make sense? I think that's how she said it. Sorry, I was reading the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I totally, You've I heard it. I zoned out for a second <laughs> then. <laughs> uh, Faz wouldn't be that hard. Dead by Daylight would be way harder for you. Okay. Someone said... I've never played either. R.I.P. mic. Yeah, the mic isn't working. Well, it's not plugged in. It's not, If you just joined the stream, y'all... We had, we had a fiery 15 to 20 minutes at the beginning where I had a nervous breakdown. Um, <laughs> I'm like, when I... Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's just like uh, someone said, don't even start that shit here, mate. That's what I should have said to the, my laptop. You should have. Yeah. You should have told your laptop up front. <laughs> Um, okay, I want to, we're going to get going soon, um, but let me just check my final questions for you, Zaki boy. What do we got? Um, okay, this is just a question I want an answer to. What time do you go to bed and what time do you wake up? Oh, that's actually good. I hope everyone hears this so that they don't, because I think people think I air them um, when I just have a really weird time, uh, sleep schedule. So during the winter... Uh, generally, I'll go to sleep at around 5 to 7 a.m. Um, and then I'll wake up roughly between 4 and 6 p.m. Dude. So it's pretty much nocturnal. Uh, and then in the summer, uh, I'll probably wake up, I'll probably go to sleep around uh, maybe 3 a.m. I don't know when I'll be going to sleep, but I know I'll be waking up roughly around 12 p.m. in the summer. Because I do, in the summer, I definitely want to take advantage of the sunlight because I love summer. Um, You're a vampire. Yeah, in the winter is just horrible and cold, and, and, I, and, I, and I don't like it. <laughs> this way, at some point, I will definitely be moving to Asia um, for the weather. I'm not even kidding. Like, mm. uh, definitely. I mean, it's not just the weather. I also like have a heritage over there and stuff like that. But move yeah. to LA. It's fucking sunny here all the time. Maybe when things get a bit. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> what things haven't been going well? <laughs> really? Oh, God. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, okay, talk to me. Well, you kind of talked about this a little bit, but um, my last question for you is, like, what do you hope or see for the future of gaming, specific to Valorant, but if you don't have any, any idea about that, like, where do you think gaming is headed? Because I have, like, a little idea, and who knows... <laughs> Such a good question. But it, oh, is it? Okay. okay, but if you can't answer it, it's totally fine. You That's can just talk fine. about your channel if you want. That's fine. Well, the first thing I want to say, and I actually, before I do answer it, I'm also going to fill this up because I've drank pretty much all of it. Um, but before I go real quick, uh, not before I go, before I get the water, um, the whole gamer schedule thing. To be very clear, and I want to make this very clear because I know that some um, younger people watch me sometimes and they... I think people maybe get a not necessarily accurate uh, idea of what I do. Uh, I don't play games as much as many of you. In fact, I play games a lot less than many of you, honestly. I barely play games because when you're... Uh, I mean, later on I'll probably be playing more games, but right now I'm building a business. So I play games as much as I need to understand the business. 
but realistically, more times than not, and you'll and those of you who watch me stream know this. You know, a lot of you ask me when I'm streaming to play a game, and I'm working. Like that, that that's the main thing. You know, if I'm to bring news, if I'm to be uh, current, if I'm to be up to date, if I'm to bring you the latest on everything, uh, it takes a lot of just being up to date with everything, which means being on Twitter all the time. Uh, you know, studying the industry, studying what these, uh, as what Miranda's is talking about, what's coming up within the gaming industry, because, and this is something else I suppose I should say is, when it comes to like YouTube and and social media and stuff, a lot of people are hoping for the viewers, uh, for a lot of people like the the sentiment I think is, please support me, please uh, give me views, please subscribe to me and stuff like that. And I understand the notion, um, but. Personally, the best way that, like, the way that I think the thing that shifted my mindset when I started making a living from this is you need to do something for the gaming industry, not the other way around. You can't make a living from the giving uh, from the gaming industry. You need to boost the gaming industry, mm. and that is a lot. That that's a lot easier said than done, and that takes a lot of time to understand. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's a reason why the videos I post aren't in-game guides is because there are already some really good channels that do that mm. but when it comes to lore and storyline and other many projects that i haven't shown you yet um you know it's really about building on the entertainment medium that is that is the gaming industry mm. when i was at bbc um you know there was this case of you know we had to work not had to but we were working on like spin-off games for like doctor who and stuff and um it really gave me a, a sense of understanding of you know, when it comes to corporations, when it comes to big money, essentially, and all that sort of stuff, what are you giving to the community? Not what is the community giving to you? That's that's the bottom line when it comes to making a living in this, is you've got to innovate. If you don't innovate, you're going to be very, very vulnerable. And that's what a lot of YouTubers, starting YouTubers who haven't quite made a living, but are like trying, it's about uh, finding how you can contribute to the community. Mm. That said, I'm going to grab, grab this water and then I'm going to answer mm -hmm. the actual question that you Yeah. Gave me. So I'm going to speak to that a little bit while you go get water. I think the same thing applies. And I think I talked about this last stream or I've spoken about this in an interview recently is this idea that like, um, you know, you have to be doing something for a reason. Like you can't just start doing fucking YouTube videos or start a, a Twitch stream even just because you're like, oh, I kind of want to get noticed. Like you have to have some kind of motivation for doing it. That's like contributing, you know, like making people happy. Like, I don't know, your content has to have some kind of meaning or purpose or whatever. And I think that that's true. I saw a TikTok video about that recently and, I, and it really struck me. They were talking about how people who are successful on TikTok, it's like they're doing it for, for a more noble purpose than notoriety. And I think like that, that kind of speaks to what you were saying, Zaki, as well. Um, uh, one thing in terms of you answering this question about the future of gaming, my whole take on the future of gaming, and let's be real, I don't know that much about gaming, but I'm learning. But my whole take on it is, is that I think from an entertainment perspective, I think all these, all this kind of whisper in the community about uh, them making films like features and stuff based on the lore of these video games with video game characters like myself, I think that that's gonna be a thing. I don't know when, oh, yeah. it might be like five, 10 years away, but I completely agree. I've been seeing that, um, you know, everywhere. No, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt about that. And actually to, to add on to what you said there, just as an example of that, and this is just because I'm a nerd for this stuff, um, but Epic Games, the developer for Fortnite, publisher for Fortnite. Now, a lot of you will know Fortnite, obviously, but a lot of you won't maybe know about the business end behind Epic Games, which is something that I'm massively fascinated by because it's sort of what we're talking about here. Epic Games isn't just Fortnite. Epic Games has built the Unreal Engine, and the Unreal Engine is an engine that um, game that Valorant actually uses the Unreal Engine. Valorant literally runs on Epic Games Engine. Um, but apart from that, um, the Unreal Engine is being used to literally uh, uh, build... Uh, it, was built, it was used in The Mandalorian, for for uh for for film scenes like the the um the bridge between film and gaming at the end of the day this all comes down to technology what is technology able to do and what can we how can we wrap technology around different fandoms so in valorant that would be to do with the storyline in fortnite that's why we have travis scott um doing the doing the concerts and that's the sort of thing that i see in the future of gaming is just a lot more interactivity 
um, between uh, gamers and uh, the IPs. That's that's the that's the main thing. Zaki, how long do you see this game going? Ten years or five? And that's that's a good part of the question. But the thing is with this is that I don't think there's ever, uh, especially like when it comes to Riot or when it comes to Epic Games or any sort of um, large gaming company. Um, and this is why I, I picked Valorant to do something on because I bet on the developer. Um, <laughs> there is no end in sight <laughs> at the end of the day. There is zero end in sight. Um, at the end of the day, they will never want this game to go out of business. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm hoping that Valorant Hub, not only the, the game, I'm hoping that Valorant Hub will be going, like, will be running and doing well, even at, even when I'm dead, like, even, like, 100 years from now. Like, that, that, that's really how I... Like, yeah, it's like a brand that you have in your head. Mm -hmm. Really, exactly. Um, so Smig as far as, like, Smigs McBuns sorry, just, uh, just followed, so thanks, my dude. Uh, thank you for the follow to Miranda. <laughs> and remember, if you haven't followed already, do it. Oh yeah, guys! I haven't said I haven't said all the things you gotta you gotta follow. Also, I uh, I was texting my best friend because she's coming over, and I was like, "Can you come over a little bit later?" And then she sent me a screenshot of me like looking down at my phone, texting her, and she's like, "You texting me?" Made me laugh. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, she's watching it." Uh, data boy. What's happened? Uh, I don't know. It, the, the, the stream from me has. It seems like people are still chatting. Oh, there we go. Maybe it was my internet. I think it was my internet. It's fine. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry to put. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, don't. Yeah, yeah, you put the fear of God in me, Zaki. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fine. Sorry, sorry everyone. Uh, it might mess with my internet. Um, but yeah, as far as the future of gaming, I mean, basically, what, what depends on how old you are, right? Personally, I'm in my early twenties, so I've seen mine. I saw Minecraft when I was. I mean, Minecraft became well, launched when I was 12, right? Um, so I've seen, like, everything happen from Minecraft up until now, and so I've seen, like, Fortnite do well, I've seen Valorant obviously do well, I've seen Overwatch do well, I've seen Call of Duty do well, I've seen Apex come, and I've seen all these different IPs go up and down in popularity, and that's where this whole dead game thing comes, which the majority of games that people call dead really aren't. Uh, Apex even is a billion dollar franchise at this point, etc. So, um... The main thing is, is that it's all about fandom. Gaming is always going to be driven by fandom and technology. That's the end. That that's the end game here. And as long as technology is is uh, is continuously developed, which there's a lot of money in it, so it will be. And as long as fandom continues to be driven by storylines, which, mm -hmm. which is uh, which is law, mm -hmm. we're going to see everything that you could possibly think of and things that you could never have even thought of. I say that as someone who I'm aware of how old I am in a lot of communities here, but how young I am on this on the on the on the scheme of things. Mm -hmm. You know, where a lot of our parents, uh, I'm talking to chat and obviously you as well, Miranda. But like, uh, a lot of our parents will have seen uh, the internet when it first ever came out, like when it was first. So like, when you think about where we are now, where um, you know we have Travis Scott's live concert, we ha where we have like 20 million plus people in one sort of area if, if that makes sense and we think about where the internet was when we were doing using emails only for it think about the 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 jump or the, the leap in technolo technological advancement and then where it could be in 10 years from now mm. and that's basically that that's that's all we can really um look at uh Saki, how old are you i'm 22 i'm 22 four guys in fortnite isn't dead the interest joke exactly um Fortnite is getting, and honestly, and honestly, and I and I won't go too much into it. But as like, I don't think Fortnite is being ruined by anything. Honestly, um, I don't think anything's ruining Fortnite. I think there's definitely going to be interest that, uh, that peaks and, and drops at different points in a life cycle, which is normal for any uh, for any IP. Um, but Fortnite itself is 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 going stronger than ever, um, and so is Epic Games. Um, so I don't think that anything's. Um, I think everything in general, honestly, the gaming industry is in a great place. I'm not even kidding. Like, there are definitely things that need to be improved, obviously. But um, like, there's a reason why there's a reason why I decided after going to BBC rather than becoming an editor for another broadcast, like you know, rather than trying to extend my contract with the BBC or I love your cat, <laughs> or going to ITV or any other sort of Netflix or whatever. There's a reason why I, I decided to go self-employed in gaming. It's because I'm genuinely excited for it. So, yeah, uh, yeah there's, there's loads of stuff that's coming out. <laughs> Say hello. She's 
so cute. I was like wondering when she was gonna come say hi. <laughs> she always comes say says hi for like a millisecond and then she's like, hell no. So cute. Um, Lessie said, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. Dude, I literally the other day was like thinking how like I want to be 22 and listen to that song. I don't know about you. Mm -hmm, 22. Honestly, being 22 feels really weird to me because like I feel really old now, but I also feel like it depends on the context that I'm in. Like when I was You're not school, old, babe. When I was 18. Well, I, that's, this is the thing, though, but when you're talking to and when you're in a community with teenagers, you are old. You oh, I mean? yeah. No, so I know. I'm exactly. getting a lot of messages from 15-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, exactly. I'm so elderly. <laughs> exactly. And that's, and that's the weird thing for me because, like, when people talk about um, games, for example, like, because I've seen everything grow and dip and grow and dip, I don't worry about life cycles anymore because I'm just like, <laughs> sustainability is a long-term long thing. Uh, but I, yeah, like when I was when I was uh, in DVC, I remember the first time uh, people didn't know how old I was. That was the thing, right? People didn't know how old I was, and people weren't gonna ask or anything. Mm -hmm. But at some point, like with health and safety things, for example, they had to like fill in my date and stuff. Like, I'm, obviously, my my boss knew how old I was and stuff, but it wasn't a regular thing to, to be asked, or whatever. And then I ex then I then then I said my my birth date um, to someone, and uh, here's a little thing actually that no one ever knew about me. Um, my nickname, not like my genuine nickname, people didn't call me this, but like a fun little nickname that I had was the fetus of the office. <laughs> I was the fetus of the office because the average age in the office that I was working in was probably roughly around, I don't know, maybe 40s. Uh, and obviously I was 18. Mm. So I was, um, you know, I was very much the, the baby of the office, basically. Oh, um, yeah, I'm sure. I can only imagine. <laughs> Um, oh, let me hang on two seconds. Is there anything we didn't? Oh, I wanted to say shout out to Yemdet, Data Boy Gaming, and Wizard Foz Fifteen for um. Sorry, I hope I said all your names correctly for following. Um, we really, really appreciate it. Um, we are Zachy. Do you have anything to say before we uh before we get out of here, my love? Uh, nothing really to promote apart from follow Miranda on all her socials, <laughs> on YouTube, Twitch. Um, um, that's pretty much it, really. I, uh, uh, Data Boy, uh, uh, sorry, a little quick shout out to Data Boy because Data, I know who Data is, he's on the Discord all the time. Uh, shout out to you, Data, a real boy, because I know, I know, uh, I know uh, you're active a lot, so I appreciate that. And also Orange GD. I don't believe at 22 we are roughly the same age. I think the thing is, is that if I shaved, I would probably look like a teenager as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, ooh, did something else happen? Did someone else follow? Oh, uh, Yuck and Yan. Hell yeah, baby. Yuck and Yan. I should just look at fucking slobs. Um, okay, <laughs> y'all, we're going to get out of here. Um... Again, I know you guys are being super nice about it, but I'm fucking mortified about the IT issues. Um, and I'm really sorry. And I just want to say that thank, thank you again to my mod, Simply Santasia, for dealing with my uh, stressful calls and just supporting me. We'll get through this. I don't know what happened, but this shit happens. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to you, Zaki, for um, all your support, for your channel, for being my friend. I appreciate you so much. Go and follow um, Valorant Hub on YouTube if you aren't already. He makes amazing content. Um, he needs to start making TikToks, quite honestly. Um, so <laughs> get on that. that. Definitely. Get on that, please. I, I don't know if you noticed, but I was posing to TikTok about a week ago. You I really? Didn't I didn't see it. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't me showing my face. It was me like... Um, it Just was do gameplay like, or something. Yeah, well, it's... So I was posting like short clips of what I was posting on YouTube, and to be fair, they like they didn't flop as much as I was expecting them to. Um, so that was nice. Um, but I do need to get on there, and I do need to because we've been talking about doing a duet for like however yeah. long. Now. So I finally yeah. need to pull the trigger on that one and, and do it. So and I also, agree. if you're watching this, I said this to Leslie Bear today. I messaged her on um, Instagram. If you're watching this and you main Sky, um, feel free to like tag me in anything just so I can see it. I can repost it. If it's on TikTok, I can do edit, like whatever it, it may be. Um, so guys, we're going to wrap this up. 
Um, follow Valorant thank Hub. Thank you for having me, Miranda. Seriously, I haven't said it yet. Well, I think I said it early, but like, thank you seriously, because like, oh my God, it's so yeah. awesome just like doing this. I'm so happy that we did this, and I'm so happy that we did like the previous collaborations too. And yeah, I don't think this will be this won't be the last thing we do obviously together. Hell no, baby, stuck with um, me. There's so there's so many things that I have ideas for that I want to bounce off with you and stuff like that. And we've already spoken about a lot, so yeah. thank you very much for having me here. And thank of you course. for putting up with me on the stream. I really appreciate you. <laughs> um, and, and I thank you for all the good questions and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, so. well, don't worry. You'll 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 I'll make you come back. Um, yeah. uh, what else was I gonna say? Yo, thank you so much for coming. You're absolute legends. I appreciate you. Follow uh, both of us on all our socials. Um, follow me on Twitch. I love you guys. Ah, stream number two. We did it. Stream number two. Let's go. All right. I'm going to change the screen and then I'm going to do all the things and then I'm going to end it. Okay. So it's going to. Okay. Bye, friends. Bye. <laughs> all right. Hang on, Zachy, my dude. We're still. They can still hear us right now. No worries.